throwaway because my husband stalks Reddit. Also, I know he isn't cheating on me. He's at home more often than not, and I have full access to his electronics, as does he to mine. My husband and I have been together since we were young teenagers. We got married last year and have a six-month-old daughter together. She is the light of both our lives, as we both came from broken homes and want a better life than we lived growing up. My best friend came a few years later. We used to live in the same neighborhood and casually began to hang out. She lives with both her parents and siblings as she is studying to get her bachelor's degree. At first, she didn't like my husband, said that he was clingy and tried to insert himself into our friendship. WTF, she was civil to him because he was my romantic partner. For context, my husband is bipolar type two, autism and PTSD and it causes him to be a little socially awkward and miss certain social cues and taboos. I love him regardless of it all. Over the last few years, we have been hanging out a lot more. She comes over for a few drinks, we go to movies, and even visit local attractions together. We all three have a good time, and my husband does try to make nights for just the two of us often too. However, last year my husband and I found out we were expecting a child together in January. I was working and fell ill because, at the time, I was working a fast food place. I threw up and went to the doctor. Come to find out, I was eight and a half weeks pregnant. My life changed, and I had become more busy to get myself ready for motherhood. My best friend saw me less and less, and we couldn't talk as much. My husband and I got married almost a month and a half after discovering we were going to become parents. That's when our dynamic changed. Recently, I applied to school and am currently in college trying to get a law degree so I can become a paralegal and get to law school. I'm also a stay-at-home mom while doing college too. I've been super busy. One day, my husband gets a text and it's from my best friend. She asks if they can talk as she was upset. He took the phone call with me protesting and a few minutes later said, Sandra, fake name. We need to go get Carla, fake name. Her father's picking a fight with her. I get upset as we were watching a movie together, and I had just gotten the baby down for bed. We go to her house, which is about 20 minutes away, and she stays with us for a night. As I get our daughter back down to bed, Carla asks to cuddle with the two of us in our bed. I was hesitant. I have issues with claustrophobia due to a traumatic experience as a child. My husband gave the go-ahead. We settle in for the night. Carla's dad apologized and she heads back home. Once she was gone, I blew up on my husband. What he did was not only inappropriate, but was disrespectful to my boundaries. Ever since, when she has an issue with her dad, she calls my husband and vents. One day, while my in-laws were staying with us, my mother-in-law overheard a convo with my hubby and Carla. She was concerned and asked me if I was okay with it. I said, no, not really, but every time I bring it up, he gets defensive saying that she needs help, that she is going through a hard time, blah, blah, blah. It is important to note that my mother-in-law was cheated on in the past by her ex, my husband's father. We are also extremely close and she sees me as a daughter. She hates cheaters with a passion and my husband, who I will refer to as James, was using the same excuses his father did. She asked to speak to him privately and walk to our living room. They got into a heated match and James apologized to me. He said he didn't know that it was hurting me and causing issues in our marriage. I asked him, how would he feel if I had asked him if another man could sleep in the bed with us? He kind of deflated and tried to say, it's different, blah, blah, blah. His stepfather, Mark, fake name, spoke up and said, it is the same. You're uncomfortable with it. So is she. Quit with the excuses. James respects Mark quite a lot, actually. Mark raised him since he was eight, and his own father was in and out of the picture. Once the dust settles, my husband truly apologized to me for his actions and said that he would do better. I kissed him, and that was that. However, I wouldn't be right here if that was the end of the issues. Lately, Carla has been calling him three to eight times a day. She says it's because she is bored and has no one else to talk to. I snap. I call him out over the nonchalance about the situation, how when she calls, he answers, how it is making me feel like a third wheel in my marriage, etc. His response, she's just lonely. You're letting it get to you. 
That night I slept in the living room. I'm starting to suspect that she is trying to monopolize his time. She calls him for over an hour each time he calls, they talk, she complains about her life, etc. Almost like she is his girlfriend or something. I'm starting to find this relationship troubling. It's getting to the point that it is affecting my marriage. Where do I go from here? Any advice would be appreciated. Edit. Thanks everyone for the feedback. I'm going to have a talk with him, with his mom involved. He won't listen to me if I don't. I'm tired of fighting him over this. I should have an update with a resolution in a couple days. I'm going to read everyone's responses more thoroughly. Thanks for the advice. Edit number two. My husband and I had a sit-down talk. His mother and stepfather weren't available. He promised me that he would explain everything in detail. I called Carla and she said that we could talk Friday when she wasn't busy with school. She had something she needed to air out. I will have an update on Friday, hopefully. Edit number three. I woke up to a text from Carla this morning. She actually wants to talk to me tonight alone as her schedule has changed. We are going to have a heart to heart. Hopefully I will have some news. Edit number four. I need some time. I will post an update later on. My heart is hurting. Hubby and I are getting a divorce. Thank you for understanding everybody. Update now. For a few comments before the update. Comment one. Honey, she is not the issue. Your husband is. And he is already cheating on you emotionally. You need to set him straight and say, you're tired of being a third party. He has two choices, cut her off or stop the contact, communication and phone, or lose you. This is non-negotiable. If he won't answer or says she is lonely and needs him, whatever, tell him it's over. He is letting another woman trample all over your marriage. But he is already cheating, whether you see that or not. Comment two, he needs to cut her off or it's the end of your marriage. And you need to lay it out to him like that. He only seems to get it for a minute when someone is blunt with him, like his mother and stepfather, or really put him on the spot and ask if he'd rather be with Carla than you. Does that sound harsh? Yes. But he's already been told multiple times that this is making you uncomfortable. And you aren't going about it the petty way by making a close male friend. Now for the update, thanks for sticking with me through this. So Carla and I talked. She came clean about everything. Turns out she's been in love with James for years. She admitted to trying to wedge herself between us, hoping he'd leave me for her. I couldn't believe it. My best friend, the one I trusted, was after my husband. I felt sick to my stomach. I confronted James, and he was just as shocked as I was. He swore he had no idea, and that he never saw her that way. But that wasn't the end of it. The next day, James's phone kept buzzing nonstop. It was Carla, apologizing, begging him to talk to her. I lost it. I grabbed his phone and blocked her number. James didn't stop me. He agreed it was the best thing to do. We needed to protect our family, our marriage. The aftermath was messy. Carla's parents called us, furious that we'd cut her off. They said we were overreacting, that she was just a confused kid. But I wasn't having any of it. I told them everything she'd done, how she'd tried to destroy my marriage. They were silent after that. I think they finally saw the truth about their daughter. Just when I thought we could breathe again, James's job dropped a bomb on us. He was being transferred across the country. It was a huge opportunity for him, a promotion that would secure our future, but it meant leaving everything behind our home, our friends, the life we'd built. It was a tough decision, but we decided to go. We needed a fresh start, away from all the drama. Packing up our lives wasn't easy. I found old photos of Carla and me, reminders of a friendship I thought would last forever. I threw them out. It hurt, but it was necessary. James was my rock through it all. He took care of the baby, handled the movers, made sure I was okay. He proved to me that his family was his priority. The night before we left, James's mom came over. She hugged us tight and whispered in my ear, you're doing the right thing. It was the reassurance I needed. We were leaving behind a lot of pain, but we were also moving towards something better. 
We've been in our new place for a week now. It's been hard adjusting to a new city, a new routine, but it's also been good for us. James and I are stronger than ever. We've had to rely on each other and it's brought us closer. Our daughter is thriving too. She loves her new room, the park down the street. And me? I'm finally feeling like I can breathe again. I'm enrolling in a local college to continue my law studies. It's a step towards the future I've always wanted. A future for my family, a future where I can make a difference. So that's where we are now. A new city, a new start, and a marriage that's survived its, its toughest test. I'm not saying it's been easy, but I know we made the right choice, and I know we're going to be okay. Thanks for reading. My husband cheats while I'm fighting cancer, so I forgive him. But when he thinks we're starting fresh, I serve him divorce papers right after surgery. Hello? Throw away as I don't want this getting back to friends or family. I'm a 30-year-old female with a history of breast cancer in my family. I have lost my mother and aunt to it. I am thus far cancer-free, but I am going forward with a double mastectomy just to be cautious. After months of looking into it, I am deciding to go flat post-surgery rather than undergo breast reconstruction. This post is not to ask if I should go through with it or any such thing. It is happening. I want advice on my 34-year-old husband. He is sweet and caring. He treats me like an absolute queen. He has been nothing but amazing our entire seven-year relationship. I know it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I don't want to read dozens of comments about how he's a piece of shoot and I deserve better. A few months ago, I approached my husband with the news. We have, of course, discussed the surgery, but he didn't know about my recovery plans. I sat him down, explained my plans, and waited for him to respond. He was quiet for a moment, and then looked relieved, and said he would love me no matter what. He seemed fine, but over the past few months, he's been a bit off. He is very clingy and huggy when we have intimacy, and he pays my chest a lot more attention. A few times we've been lying in bed after, and He'll just put his head on my chest, look at me, and say, never change. The surgery date is six weeks out, and he's been a little distant. He's not ignoring me or anything, but I'm used to him being very excitable and physically affectionate. However, we've been more like roommates the last few weeks. A quiet, polite, hi, bye, how was your day? But he is not acting like a partner. I came home early from a family event. He said he was feeling sick, and I wanted to come home and take care of him. I found him sitting alone in our room, drunk and sobbing. He doesn't drink at all. His mother was an alcoholic and did a number on him growing up. Before it's even asked, yes, he is in therapy. I asked him if he was okay, and he kind of word vomited on me. But from what I understand, he thinks everything in our lives has been perfect, and now I'm ruining it. It's been a few days, and he apologized profusely and said he is going through some things, and it was not my responsibility to deal with. He has made an effort to be more affectionate and reassuring to me, but I can tell his heart isn't really in it. I'm not really sure what to do. The only thing I can think is wrong is my surgery, but the more I think about it, the more pissed I become. He's had months and months to think about it and voice any concerns, not throw a drunken tantrum by himself. I would be more upset with him, but there's never even been a hint of this kind of behavior. I guess I'm just confused about what I should do. We have talked about it, but he just says it's not anything to do with me and shuts down further discussion. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, now I'm ruining it. Are you absolutely sure this is what he said? Or is this your interpretation of what he said? Look, he's been supportive because he loves you and wants the best for you and wants you to be healthy and happy. He didn't want to express any misgivings or insecurities about this because that's not what a supportive husband does. But he's hurting. The woman he loves, the woman he loves having intimacy with, and yeah, the woman whose breasts he loves is going through major surgery and having her breasts removed and no tissue expanders slash implants. Period. No discussion. Of course, he understands your reasoning. He's just scared. He's scared of how you'll look and how you'll feel. He's scared of how he'll react. He's scared of how you'll feel about him during and after this process. 
You're already pissed off at him for his one episode of feeling sorry for himself. No wonder he says it's not anything to do with you. Now he knows that you'll just get pissed off at him if he expresses any misgivings, any doubts, any feelings at all. Comment two. How about a therapist that you can meet together? That's a pretty major surgery, and he's gonna be in a caretaker role while you recover, so even if you take that angle only, I think it would be helpful. I'm curious as to if you met with a genetic counselor and did testing prior to your surgery choice. I was in a similar boat and considering a total mastectomy, but all of my genetic tests came back great in spite of what my mom and GMAs on both sides experienced. So, the breasts are staying for now. Anyway, I'm sure he has some feelings about it, but probably also feels like he's not allowed to voice them because it would come off like he's not supportive. But let's be real, breasts are a thing and not having them is a thing and you don't intend to do reconstruction. So it means he has no breasts from then on. I'm sure he can rationally accept that, but he's only 36. He has another at least half of life to go and breasts are now off the table. Now for the update, Thanks for sticking around after my last post. So it's been a month since I last wrote and things have taken a turn. My husband, the one who's been my rock, did something I never thought he would. He cheated on me. I found out because the woman he was with felt guilty and messaged me. She didn't know about my surgery or our situation. I was floored. This was the man who had been nothing but a saint for seven years. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I confronted him and he broke down, admitting everything. He said he felt like he was losing a part of me with the surgery and he didn't know how to cope. He was looking for some escape, a way to not think about the upcoming change. It was a one-time mistake, he claimed, driven by fear and alcohol. I was angry, hurt, and felt betrayed on a level I didn't know existed. But as I looked at him, this broken man who had been my everything, I couldn't help but forgive him. Maybe it was my own desperation not to face the surgery alone. Or maybe it was the years of love that wouldn't let me let go. I felt weak for it, but I couldn't walk away. We tried to move past it, but the trust was shattered. Every time he touched me, I wondered if it was out of love or guilt. Every time he was late coming home, I couldn't help but suspect the worst. It was a silent tension that lived with us an uninvited guest at every meal, every conversation. Then, as if things couldn't get more complicated, my sister, who had been my confidant through all this, confessed that she had known about the affair for weeks. She had seen them together, but didn't know how to tell me. She was torn between protecting me and not causing me more stress before the surgery. I felt betrayed all over again. My sister, the one person I thought I could always count on, had kept this from me. The surgery was looming closer, and I was a mess. I was about to go through one of the biggest challenges of my life, and my support system was crumbling, but I had to focus on my health. On the reason I was doing this in the first place, I couldn't let their mistakes derail me from my path. The day of the surgery came, and despite everything, my husband was there. He held my hand until they wheeled me away. When I woke up, he was still there, looking more relieved than I had seen him in months. Maybe it was the vulnerability of the situation, but we started to really talk. He opened up about his fears, his guilt, and how he hated himself for what he had done. I told him about my pain, my disappointment, and my fear of facing the future with a partner I couldn't trust. We decided to start fresh. It wasn't going to be easy, and I knew there would be days when I would remember his betrayal and feel that sting all over again. But we both knew we wanted to try. We started going to therapy together working through the layers of hurt and mistrust. It's been a rough ride, and I'm not sure what the future holds for us. But I'm healing, both physically and emotionally. I'm learning to trust again. And he's learning to cope with his fears in healthier ways. It's a slow process, but we're taking it one day at a time. Thanks for reading. My boyfriend jokes about my post-birth stitches and neglects our premature baby. So I leave him and take everything he loves. I've been with my boyfriend for two years and it's been rocky at best. I'm a first time mom that's eight days postpartum and caring for a five week premature baby. Baby is mostly healthy aside from some jaundice, but the birth was long and traumatic. I ended up hemorrhaging with a second degree tear. So obviously I have several stitches and a very painful undercarriage. 
My boyfriend was there all throughout the birth, all 26 hours of it, and saw the amount of pain that I was in. About three hours before I finally gave birth, the epidural failed and I was in immense screaming pain until the anesthesiologist was able to come in and give me a second dose. He was there as I pushed and he was there as I bled and bled. He has not been the biggest help with our infant. In fact, on our first night at home, he locked himself in our office and hung out on his computer while I was exhausted and tended to our newborn. I have felt largely alone in all of this, and it's only because of my mother and her husband that I am getting by at all. He didn't even take the time to learn how to change a diaper from the nurses on the recovery ward. I am terrified to leave him alone with our son, as on the first night, I left briefly to get a bottle for him. And he started crying, and when I came back into the room, my boyfriend was facing the opposite direction, still asleep, only stirring when I said his name. He was less than five feet from the bassinet. Anyway, we are trying to work through our issues. He learned how to dress, change, and feed our sun bottles and has been watching him while I try to nap, which is great. He is making small adjustments and is taking initiative to help out and do chores around the house. That's great. However, last night we were joking around and I said something. I really don't remember what, as my brain is mush, I don't even remember the context, but it was playful and jokey. I know it was, but even if it was misconstrued, I don't know how he could say what he responded with in any circumstance. He said, I'm going to rip your stitches. The air was sucked out of the room and I simply said, what? He was smirking and laughing and repeated himself, I'm gonna rip your stitches with my massive wang. I immediately got upset, crying from the postpartum hormones and disgust asking why he would say something like that. I asked how he could say that he was upset by how much pain I was in during the birth of our son, and then turn around and say something like that, even as a joke. He passed it off as being mindless. He wasn't thinking. He wasn't sure why he said it. When I continued to be upset, talking about what I went through and how hurtful it was, he then changed his tune. He said I was overreacting, that it wasn't that big of a deal. It was a joke. Maybe it was but it was disturbing. How could you joke about something like that knowing the kind of pain I'm in? He was accusing me of latching onto nothing, misconstruing what he said, taking it and running wild with it. I don't think I'm overreacting. Even if it's a joke, it has to come from somewhere. I don't know what to do. I can't talk to anyone close to me because how do you explain that to people? I don't work. I wasn't working when I got pregnant as I was out of the country and in college at the time. I don't have maternity leave and we live in a house that I'd be responsible for making payments on. Not to mention we have a brand new baby that I'm struggling with. I love my son to pieces and I'm doing everything in my power to provide for him. And I'm doing it mostly on my own with minimal help from my boyfriend. How can I address this moving forward? I feel like he said shoot like this in the past and it's always had the same reaction from me. So I'm not sure why he's not learning. I need it to stop happening and I need him to be a better man, partner, and father. Counseling is the obvious answer, but can this even be fixed if he doesn't take any criticism? Edit. I know I'm a colossal idiot. I know I never should have given him the opportunity to impregnate me. In reality, I hadn't had a cycle since February, and I didn't think I ovulated because of PCOS. This baby is a miracle, and I am blessed. I just wish my boyfriend could be who he needs to be not only for me, but for our child. I know that I have severely messed up. I don't know what I wanted to hear, but believe me, I know this is a messed up situation. I am filled with such regret, not for having this baby because I love him more than anything, and he is my entire world, but for allowing a man like this to become the father of my child. I wanted normalcy for my baby, not this nonsense. I want my son to grow up respecting women, not with this repulsive frat boy humor. He deserves so much better than this. I didn't think of my post history when I made this post. I never considered that what I had previously posted could be considered attack. In all honesty, days before I found out I was pregnant, I was in talks to leave and come back to Canada. I was gonna get out and then I got a positive pregnancy test and my world was flipped upside down. I don't know that I can come back from this but I can't move in with my mom. I also know that I can't raise a baby on my own. 
There is a lot to think about here, and I am so terrified. Just know that I am very aware of how foolish I am. You don't need to remind me. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Well, I officially hate your boyfriend. What an absolutely disgusting thing to say. That must have been so awful to hear. His response is just as concerning as his joke. He should have been at the groveling level of apology when he saw your reaction. And instead, he started blaming you for overreacting. You weren't overreacting. I don't know what advice to give you. I'm sure people will tell you to leave, but you've already said that will be difficult. What I will say is please be careful and keep a watch on his words and behavior from here on out. It's well known that abuse and intimacy attack of postpartum women is a thing. So if he escalates, then please find a way out. Comment two, he will not be better or different. He will get as bad as you will allow. If your mom can help you, if you have somewhere else to go, go there. Go to court, get a custody order and child support set up. Look for other support services in your area. Don't stay with this man. The older your child gets, the more difficult it will be for you to leave. You'll settle into a routine. Each new thing will be incrementally worse than the last. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for the update. So the other day, things got worse. My boyfriend, let's call him Mr. Insensitive, decided to pull another one of his stunts. He came home late, reeking of booze, and guess what? He lost his job. Said something about a disagreement with his boss, but I could tell there was more to it. He's been on thin ice there for a while, and now with a baby and bills piling up, we're in a real mess. I was fuming, but I kept it together for the sake of our son. I thought maybe this was a wake-up call for him, but nope. The next morning, he acted like nothing happened. He even had the nerve to ask me why I was so tense. Can you believe that? But wait, it gets better. I found out from a friend that he was seen flirting with some girl at the bar the night he got fired. And here I am, stitches and all, trying to keep our lives from falling apart. I felt betrayed, humiliated, and just tired. I confronted him about the girl, and he just laughed it off, said I was being paranoid. But when I pushed, he got angry, said I was trying to control him, and that I should be grateful he's even sticking around. That's when I knew. This wasn't just about being insensitive. This was about respect, and I wasn't getting any. I had to do something for me and my son. So I called my mom, and she and her husband came over. They were furious when they heard about everything. My stepdad, who's never raised his voice, told Mr. Insensitive that he had to shape up or ship out. It was intense, and for a moment, I thought it might actually get through to him. But the next day, he did something I never thought he'd do. He took our son for a walk, which was great, right? Except he left him alone in the stroller outside a store while he went in to buy cigarettes. A stranger found our son and stayed with him until Mr. Insensitive came out. When I heard about it, I was beyond furious. I was scared for my baby's safety. That was the last straw. I told him he had to leave. He tried to argue, but I was done. My mom helped me change the locks, and my stepdad helped me sort out the finances. It was hard, but it had to be done. Now I'm figuring out how to move forward. My mom's been a rock, helping with the baby and giving me the support I need. I'm looking into going back to school, maybe online classes for now. And I'm talking to a lawyer about child support and custody. It's a lot, but I'm determined to make a better life for my son. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.